Father, we want to bless your name. We are grateful for the opportunity to be back here. Thank you because with you, yesterday, there's no yesterday with you. There's always today. And we thank you, Father, because we know that what you did yesterday, you will add to today. We trust you, O God, to open our eyes of understanding. We trust that you will cause us to see, you will cause us to hear, and you will also cause us to know of the things of the kingdom of God. You said to us, it's been given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. And so we believe and we receive tonight that, Lord, understanding will come to everyone. Amen. We give you honor and glory. Father, glorify yourself here. Amen. Glorify your name in this place. Amen. We have glorified you, but we glorify you again. Amen. I will continue to glorify you in our lives. Amen. We honor and, and bless your name, O oh God. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. It's wonderful to be back here. Thank God for the opportunity to be back to Metamorphosis Christian Center. Praise the Lord. And um, I want to use the opportunity to thank our set woman over this assembly, Pastor Fumi, for this opportunity to be back here. Praise the Lord. I trust that um, God's grace in this place will continue to multiply. Uh, Paul is the one, sorry, Peter is the one who said, uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So I pray that grace will continue to multiply in the name of Jesus and the peace of God also. Thank you again for this privilege. It's an honor to be here. It's a privilege to share God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. There's nothing that excites me like sharing the word of God. And I trust tonight that as we share God's word, that the spirit of God will also be working to establish his will. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know the Bible says uh, that, um, and the word was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Then the Bible says the spirit of God was also moving upon the face of the waters. So while that was happening, the Bible says, and God said, which means everywhere the word of God is preached, um, the Holy Spirit will walk. Where the word is, the Holy Spirit is. The Bible says, I think it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. He says, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. A better translation says, where the spirit of the Lord is, is allowed to be Lord, or where Jesus is recognized to be Lord, then the Holy Spirit will find room to express himself. Hallelujah. Amen. You know the Holy Spirit loves the company of the word. He can't do without the word. Amen. And I trust that in this meeting, God will advance your cause. Amen. I said God will advance your cause. Amen. God will set you upon, uh, uh, you know, a higher ground. Amen. Amen. High, high, high visibility is going to come to you in the name of Jesus. Like a city set upon a hill that cannot be healed. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, I have been struggling within me since, <laughs> since I came to this meeting. Just struggling within me. I, 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 I really don't know, but um, I know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I was wondering, um, you know, the Lord kept pushing my heart um, to teach. Uh, maybe, I don't know if that will connect with the theme of this meeting, but, but, but I don't know. I just, I just um, kept having a nudge. You know, I, 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 have <laughs> I, I, kept, I kept pushing myself to prepare something. I wanted to talk about the theme. And up till the minute they came to pick me. I wasn't just, I don't know. So I decided that let me just go with God. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, fine. It's good just to follow God. I discovered that you get more results when you follow him. Maybe tomorrow I may talk about it. I don't know, but let's see how it goes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the thought that kept coming to me, the, the word that God kept giving me is teach on fulfilling your prophetic word. 
Now, I don't know what that will mean. I'm just going to follow the Lord. Hallelujah. Somehow, somehow, I'm sure you will find out the reason why we are teaching. I, I have this understanding. I was taught that um, you understand God many times in retrospect. So you don't know the reason why God is asking you to do it, but we just go ahead. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. Now, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but tonight, you know, while I just came, I sat there. Um, I saw a position of somebody who is carrying something that is heavier than him. And the Holy Spirit said to me that there are people with burdens, and I want to lift it tonight. Now, I don't know who you are, but I saw the picture that the Holy Spirit gave me in that vision was somebody who had something, you know, that was, was heavy, so heavy on him, and he was trying to carry it, but yet, you know, that, 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 that load, let me use that phrase, um, is overwhelming the person. I, I don't know what it is that you are carrying. It could be emotional, it could be financial, it could be whatsoever it is, but I just came to tell you tonight, by the word of the Lord, that God said he will lift it. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise God. All right. So I, I will be teaching tonight on how to fulfill your prophetic word. In other words, has God ever spoken to you? He may not have spoken to you through a vessel because the prophetic word is not limited to words that are given by an instrument to you, which means God speaking through a vessel to you. It may also be a word that you receive in your spirit. Praise the Lord. Either while you are studying the Bible, then suddenly the word of God came to you from it. Praise God. Now, that will also be a prophetic word. Because prophetic word uh, simply means uh, you receiving from the mouth of God. And God can do that either in a public place or in a private place. Am I communicating? In fact, most of the prophecies that we have, uh, you know, given by the prophets, if you take time to study, majority of them were private, was not in a public place. For example, when Elijah went to, Eli I mean, Elijah went to Ahab to give him the word of God, it wasn't in a public place necessarily. That was in his palace. Thus saith the Lord. And he says, there shall not be rain except by my word. That was the word of God. Am I communicating? So you will find that many times, majority of these people received the word, you know, personally, which means in a private place. Now, but what I'm simply saying is that it doesn't matter either in the public or in the private, as long as God has spoken to you about anything, the promise of God is made known to you, then it simply means God means business, praise the Lord, which means God is out to do it. Now, but in my journey, um, many times people have also asked me, Pastor, what do I do so that God can fulfill his word? And I can't remember how many times people have asked me that question. <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, but let's look at scripture and, and try to establish something quickly tonight. Praise the Lord. Is that my timer? Is that my timer? Praise the Lord, so that I, I know and quickly adjust. It's not my timer. Oh, okay, please. I need to know how long I have or how short I need to be here. Praise the Lord. I don't want to stay beyond the normal time that we close here. Praise the Lord. When you are younger, when you are older, you, you think about time. When you are younger, you think about talking. All right, so the older you get, the more you want to be more conscious of, you know, the protocol of the house. So, I will need to know how long I have here. Okay, fine. Praise God. Now, if you have your Bible, uh, I'm sure they will project for me today. Um, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Let me, be, or let me begin from verse 16. 16 and 17. I'll just start from there. And then <clears throat> lay a foundation today, we believe, and build on that as we progress. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter number 8 and verse 17. Or 16. All right, I'll begin to read if you're there. It says, and when evening had come, they brought to him many that were 
demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word. I like the word a word. And heal all who were sick. Next verse please. That it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. He himself took or he himself took our infirmities and did what? Bore our sicknesses. In other words, when Jesus cast those spirit or those spirit, those who were possessed, casting that spirit out of those people and bringing healing to them, it's a fulfillment of a prophecy that was spoken about him. Do you understand that? So every prophecy primarily is to be fulfilled. The primary reason why God speaks to us is not to excite us. God is not in the business of excitement. I wish he is. He's not. Because the things that excite man may not necessarily excite God. Hallelujah. For example, if somebody has a brand new car now, you say, oh, wonderful, God gave me a brand new car. That doesn't excite God. Hallelujah. And it's amazing that what excites uh, us or what does not excite us sometimes are the things that excite God. If somebody gets saved now, the Bible says there's party in heaven. But there's no party here. Nobody is doing any party that somebody got saved. <laughs> but in heaven, there's great joy that one person has just been added to the kingdom of God. Now, which will make you understand that, listen to me. God does not really, really, really does things to excite you. No, he does it because that is his will. Am I communicating? So when God speaks, it's because he wants to fulfill it. It's because he wants to bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to read Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 and 11. He says, as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, Isaiah chapter 55, uh, verse 10 and 11, it says, As the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bore that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. He says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Now, this is New King James, but I'm quoting King James, all right? Don't worry. So, he says... Uh, Every word of God that goes out from the mouth of, the, of God is supposed to what? Not to return void or empty. Which means whenever the word of God returns, it should return with manifestation. So the primary reason God speaks to us is because he wants to fulfill it. It doesn't matter even if you don't understand it. As long as he speaks it, it may not make sense, but... God is out to doing what he has said. Am I communicating? If I have time, I'll share some testimonies in my own life and also in the lives of people that God has, um, you know, enabled me to pastor one time or the other or those are ministered to. Praise the Lord. Now, so the primary reason again we said is because God wants to fulfill his word. Praise the Lord. Now, but I discovered this, that with every word of God, with everything that God says to you, you have a part to play. It won't just happen. Until you understand your part, and then you begin to do what he says, uh, then you find out that um, <clears throat> what he says comes to pass. Do you understand me? Now, so what are the things primarily that we need to do quickly? I'll just quickly try to connect us to it. Praise the Lord. You know, years ago, I read um, a book by um, Miles Monroe. And in that book, you know, I think that, that must be one of those books he wrote just before he departed. Maybe years or maybe a year or two before he departed. And he says, your destiny is chosen by God. But its fulfillment is decided by you. And that word sticked to me. It, just, it was like a word that was thrown at me. That your destiny is chosen by God. Now, we don't beg God to speak. Even when you think you beg God, you can't force God to say what he doesn't want to say. How many of you know that? 
And the understanding, one of the understanding, you know, one of the understanding I got from reading that book is that actually in the real sense of it, you can't beg God to say what he doesn't want to say. How many of you know that? God will only tell you what he wants to tell you. I'm sure you know that. Why? Because he is God. Now, so we don't determine the word that God will give. He determines all that by himself. Now, but you see, we have, we, ha we have to make up our mind. There are decisions that we must make for that word to come to be. Are you following me? Now, so what are these decisions that we need to make? The first thing I discovered is that when God speaks to us, you need to anchor that word by faith. You need to establish that word in your heart by faith. Praise the Lord. You need to believe the word of God. You need to, to have faith in what God has said. You need to have faith in what God has said. You know the reason why you need to have faith in what God has said? Because the Bible says uh, that when, when, when a seed is planted and people do not have understanding to receive it, after a while the birds of the air will come take it away. So you don't need to understand it, just have faith in it. Now, in Hebrews, give me Hebrews chapter 4. I'll read verse 1, 2, 3, maybe till 5 thereabout. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to, uh, maybe verse 1 to 5 will be okay. Hebrews 4, 1 to 5. Are we there? Thank you. He said, therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, which means God's rest, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to come short of it. Next verse. For indeed, the gospel was preached unto us as well as unto them. But the word which they heard did not what? Profit them or didn't come into manifestation. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Let me stop there. Now, this scripture says, um, you know, we should be careful. Lest a promise of entering into God's rest... Even though it remains, some of you should come short of it. Why? Because people didn't believe it. So he said, unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Because that word was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. What does that mean? In other words, the people of old didn't really hear preaching. What did they hear? They heard the word of prophecy. Moses never preached to them. What Moses said is, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. So the word preach here doesn't mean what I am doing now. The word preach here simply means um, the word of prophecy that was given. Because it comes from the same root word. Hallelujah. Which means the word proclaim did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith in them that had it. In other words, the reason why the word of God didn't happen to them, those people who left Egypt for Canaan, even though God had promised right from the time of their great-grandfather, their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he said he will give that land to them. Now, but that what didn't happen to those who left Egypt, except for two people who left Egypt. All right? Joshua and Caleb. Now, but why didn't the word of God happen? Because the Bible says they didn't mix that word with faith. In other words, the first thing you need to do, immediately you receive the word of God, is to quickly mix the word of God with faith. Now, let me quickly say this to you, that every one of us, we have a measure of faith. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. That God has given to everyone a measure of faith. What is a measure of faith? A measure of faith simply means the faith that you had to receive salvation is still inside of you. But that faith needs to be built. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the subject of faith is very interesting to me. <clears throat> the more faith can be, you see, you can have more faith or less faith. It depends. Faith can either increase or decrease. Now, if faith is going to increase, which means that person uh, must be open to hearing the word of God. Because that's what the Bible says. In Romans chapter 10 verse 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, recently I was teaching somewhere and I said to them, the Bible didn't say faith comes by having heard. So, if you heard last night and you didn't hear today, it simply means you are not in the same place of faith. 
to always maintain a place of faith that will produce for you, you have to continuously do what? So he says faith comes by hearing, hearing. Hearing simply means what? Yeah, present continuous. It's not something you do. It's not in the future. No, you just keep hearing the word of God. The more you hear the word of God, the better you get in faith. The more you hear the word of God, the better you get in faith. And let me say this to you. If you see that your faith is not able to produce what Pastor Fumi is able to produce, it's not because Pastor Fumi is special. It's what you are hearing. Now, how many of you know, naturally speaking, the more money you have, the more things you are able to do. The less money you have, the less things you are able to do. In the same way, the currency of the spirit is not money, it's faith. So the more faith you have, the more you are able to do more things in the spirit. Now, the less the faith, the less the things you do. Praise the Lord. All right, so the Bible says these people didn't unite the word of God with faith. And because they didn't unite the word of God, the word of God didn't come to pass in their lives. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to take note of the word, mixing that word with what? With faith. Now, some of you, if you, don't, if you have never cooked, I'm sure you have seen somebody cook. Now, in this part of the world, when we cook our soup, we mix it with a lot of things. Is that not so? Praise the Lord. If somebody say, I want to cook maybe uh, a goosey soup or something. Now, you know a lot of things will go inside to make that, a, you call it a goosey. It's not a goosey until all those things actually go inside. Is that not so? Praise the Lord. All right, now, so, but you'll find out that you mix that a goosey with many other things to have the a goosey soup. Now, in the same way, the Bible is saying that the level of faith you have, every time you hear the word of God that seems to be higher than your mind can take, just mix it with the little faith you have. As long as you keep steering it, eventually it will produce results. Are you with me? Now, how do you receive the word of God? By faith. Now, I will just explain that to us from 2 Corinthians chapter, I think it's chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Give me verse 13. Let's look at it together. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at verse 13 with me. It says, and since we have what? The same. Your faith is not different from what Paul wrote. We have in there for what? The same spirit of faith according to that which is written. Now watch this. I believe, therefore I, I spoke. Now, watch. We also believe, therefore we, we speak. In other words, what is faith? In a simply definition. Faith is believing and speaking. Believing and speaking. So these people didn't mix the word of God with faith. How didn't they? They didn't believe the word of God to speak it. What made Joshua and Caleb made it to the land? Because they spoke what God said. You remember when the 10 spies came back or 12 spies came back? 10 of them said, we are not able to. Now, do you know unbelief and faith is released by words? Now, when somebody says, I believe God, and oftentimes we, you know, in church, I've been in the church world for a while now, over 40 years. Now, in church, people easily say they believe God. I always tell them, believing won't do the job alone. You need to also have faith. So somebody says, I believe God. Pastor, just pray. If you pray, I believe. Now, listen to me. It's good. Now, sometimes it looks like, um, you know, the person really has faith. Now, but watch what the person says after then. I thought the person just said, Pastor, I believe now. And then after you finish praying, he said, uh, I thought, I thought, Pastor prayed that I be healed. How come I'm not here yet? You see, the person is now telling you what he believes, which is unbelief. 
Are you with me? Now, it says, if you believe, we have in the same spirit of faith, the spirit of faith or the attitude of faith is that when you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. How did you get saved? Romans 10, 9 and 10. With the heart, man believeth, and with the mouth, what? Now, how many of you know it's interesting that salvation does not happen until somebody believes and says it? Now, why do you lead people in sinner's prayer? So that they can say it. That if you really believe it, we say, we normally we say, if you mean it in your heart and you say it in your mouth, you'll be saved. And salvation comes that way. Which means every other thing that God will do in our lives will come by us believing with the heart and saying it with our mouth. Did you understand what I'm saying to you? Are you following me? That is what faith is. Now, let's go to scripture and see one or two people who received the word of God and didn't, you know, either received it by faith or they received it by, 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 by unbelief or through unbelief. Faith believes and says. Unbelief also believes and says. It's the same way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you still with me? Now, let's look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Look at verse 45, first of all. And then we'll go to Luke chapter 1, verse 11 to 13. And then I'll skip because I'm also, okay, if we have the time, we'll go ahead. It says, bless is she who do, does what? Who believe for there will be a fulfillment of those things. Which were told her from who? Who is telling her? The Lord. Now, who is the one speaking here? If you take time to study, you'll find that it was Elizabeth that was saying to Mary. He's saying, whatsoever God has said to you, if you believe, there's going to be a performance, a fulfillment of what God has spoken to you. Praise the Lord. Did it come to pass? Yeah, he did. But you see, in Luke chapter 1, there are two examples. We'll look at Mary later, but I want us to look at um, Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. So we go to Luke chapter 1, verse 11. Look at it with me. Luke chapter 1. I want to read verse 11 to 13, first of all. It says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Yes, sir. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear, fear fell upon him. But the angel said, now watch, watch, watch what the angel is going to say. And the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you shall call his name what? John. Now let's stop there first of all. So... Zechariah, we, we were told, if you, we didn't read that part, but he went into the temple. That was his own day, you know, to burn incense in the second compartment. There are three compartments in the temple. So he went to the second compartment. He was a priest. And then while he was doing that, suddenly an angel appeared. And when that angel appeared by the name Gabriel, later we got to know that his, well, his function was Gabriel, not necessarily his name. And then Gabriel said to him, hello, don't be afraid, because God has answered your prayer. Hallelujah. Now, which means it was a prayer. This, this was an answer to his prayer. He's been praying for it. Now, watch. I would think if I was praying, if I'm praying for something, and God should come and say, your prayer has been answered, I should just start jubilating. Now, but watch. And so that angel said, Zachariah, your prayer is heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will do what? will bear you a son, and his name shall be what? John. Now, that is, there's no better, that word is so accurate. There's no better way God should say that word. That, your prayer has been answered. Your wife is going to give birth to a son. He didn't say he's going to give birth to a child. God is, a, is very specific. He's going to give birth to a son, and his name will be called John. Hallelujah. Next verse, please give me the next verse. Let's look at what he said quickly. And you will have joy. Okay, okay, let me leave it there. Verse 18, because I, I want us to see what he said. Verse 18. 
Let's go to verse 18. Now, Zechariah is going to answer. Now, you remember what the angel said to him? Or God said to him now? Zechariah, your prayers have been answered. Your wife is going to give birth to a son. And his name will be called John. Hallelujah. By that, I, should, I thought Zechariah should just start jumping. I said, oh, praise God, my prayer has been answered. Now watch what he will do. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? I thought you have been praying. Which means the man was praying, maybe after a while he moved into unbelief. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now, so the man was praying for a prayer he wasn't expecting result for. He was asking God, God, do it. But yet, he didn't believe that God is going to do it. So he was surprised when Zechariah came and said, well, your prayers have been answered. So Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am, what? An old man. And my wife is well advanced in years. Next verse, please. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and to bring you this what? Glad tidings. Which means this is good news that I brought to you. Hallelujah. Next verse. But behold, you will be what? Mute. The King James says you will be dumb. Unable to speak. Why? Watch. And not be able to speak until the day that these things take place. Because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. Now watch. So why was he dumb? Because he didn't believe. He didn't have faith in what the angel just said. Praise the Lord. How did his unbelief show? By what he said. I am old or we are old. In other words, I don't see how possible this is going to be. Now, so did his unbelief speak? Yes. yes. Now, how many of you know if you had just kept quiet? <laughs> his mouth wouldn't have been muted. Now, the reason why his mouth was muted was because... He said something, and if the angel allowed him to continue to speak with how powerful God, he would have stopped God from fulfilling it. Now, I will tell you the reason why many people are not muted or dumb, unable to speak in our time. Reason is because the word that this man received had to do with God's eternal purpose. God's for knowledge, if you like, God's purpose about the redemption of the earth. Because this is not just about John, this is about the coming of Jesus. No John, no Jesus. Because according to God's plan and his timetable, John must be the one to introduce Jesus. Now watch, and this is sometimes the reason, you know, people don't have understanding. You don't know the reason why sometimes God can take you through a process. And yours may be longer than the person you started with. And it doesn't necessarily mean because all I want to believe that those they married, you know, with Zachariah, you know, his age mates, those they married, you know, together, most of them had children. And I'm sure he himself must be wondering, oh, Lord, I don't know, I've prayed, I've done everything. But God's plan must be fulfilled. God didn't intend for Elizabeth to give birth to two children, only one. And he must be six months before Jesus. So the, that's why the man didn't give, if he had given birth earlier, Jesus was not ready to come. Yeah. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. Now, <clears throat> but that's not what I want you to see. This is what I want you to see here. So, his unbelief spoke. Now, the angel and God wouldn't have stopped his mouth or, or closed his mouth, if you like, or prevented him from speaking if he had not 
verbalize his. But you see, when a man is rooted either in faith or in unbelief, he will speak. You know, sometimes people are in an environment where everybody is speaking faith. So people speak faith. Give it time. Immediately they get back to their shell. They will speak what is in their heart. <laughs> Do you understand me? Now, these are the things we must guide against if the word of God will be fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Now, so Zechariah eventually didn't fulfill the word of God. And I'm trying to tell you the reason why his mouth had to be shut was because the word that he heard and the fulfillment of it had to do with God's eternal plan of redemption. Now, for the rest of us, majority of us, if not all of us, the word of God that comes to us does not, is not about God's redemption plan about the planet. It may just be about you and your family. If not, there will be many people, many children of God that will have been dumb. And the only way that John would have come was for his father's mouth to be muted. Immediately that happened, you find out that he didn't speak until the day his son came. And they said, what will his name be? In fact, naming ceremony. What, what will his name be? And everybody was wondering what his name be. Elizabeth said his name shall be John. How did he, she know? You know, for a while that scripture was like a puzzle for me. I kept asking God, how did Elizabeth know? How did she know? So one day the Holy Spirit said, read on. You didn't finish reading. Then I read and read and read until the Bible, you know, I read until when um, Mary became pregnant. And you know, Mary became pregnant six months later. So when Mary became pregnant um, or received the word of God, I will go into her. Then the Bible says she went to the house of Elizabeth. How many of you know Elizabeth didn't tell her I'm pregnant? The angel didn't tell uh, Elizabeth, hello, Mary, your cousin or your nephew, your niece, your, you know, <laughs> your niece is going to be pregnant. Did she get that information? No, they didn't know. But the Bible says immediately Mary entered and Elizabeth had the salutation of Mary. She wasn't greeting her. Just speaking to somebody she met at the door and was greeting the person. The Bible says the baby in her womb leaped. That was when John was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because according to prophecy, it said the son will be filled with the Holy Ghost from your mother's womb. So that was when he was filled. Why? Because the carrier of Jesus had just entered and is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So Jesus first baptized John while they were in the womb. Before John baptized him. Now, but watch what happened. Watch. Immediately she had that. He said, blessed are you, the mother of who? Of my Lord. How did she know that? By the Spirit. That was how she got to know by the Spirit that his name will be called John. It wasn't because he lived. Zachariah didn't tell her. <laughs> Zachariah had an encounter. didn't have the opportunity to share the encounter. Do you understand me? Now, let's look at Mary. The same scripture. Let's come to Mary and see the way she received the word of God. And the angel also, you know. Now, the same Luke chapter 1. Let me read, if you're there, from verse 30 to 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 38. Then the angel said unto her, do not be afraid, Mary. Why is, why is he always coming with do not be afraid? Well, because when you see an angel, the natural thing is you are scared. All right? Is that that you want to run away? <laughs> All right. So it says, fear not, do, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found what favor with God. Next verse, please. And behold, you will what conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. Again, very specific. That's the way God speaks. That's the way God speaks. That's the way God speaks. God does not confuse you when he speaks. Hallelujah. 
Amen? Amen. Where, where you think God did not give you the accuracy or God didn't give, God was not specific, just take time to wait on him. You'll find out the specification will come. Praise the Lord. You remember Rebecca was the one who was pregnant and in her womb, she was having so much challenge or so much trouble, challenges. And then one day she went to inquire of God and God said to her, you have two, two types of people in you. You are not carrying one child. That was a good information she had. That helped her. Praise the Lord. All right, so you will give birth to a son and shall call his name what? Jesus. Next verse, please. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Yes. Then Mary said. Now did you notice Mary is going to speak now. Then Mary said unto the angel. How can these things be? Seeing I do not know a man. Now what's the difference between what Mary said. And what Elizabeth, I mean, what Zachariah said. Zachariah said how shall these things be? Knowing that we are old. Unbelief. But you see, Eliz I mean, Mary wasn't asking in doubt. She was just saying, how is this thing going to really happen seeing that I am not married? Because you are talking about me giving birth to a child. I'm going to be pregnant. I know that biologically or even through scripture, every woman who gave birth had a man. Sarah had Abraham. All right? Anna had uh, huh? Elkanah. All right? And on and on. Now, so now you are telling me I'm going to have a son. So, I am not married, mind you. And the Jewish custom is that it's not permitted for a woman to be pregnant until you are married. Until marriage. No marriage. If you are pregnant, you just know that you have just signed your death warrant. You, you don't, you'll be stoned. And I like the children, of they know how to stone very well. Very good at stoning. You know, they came to Jesus with stones. He said, the law said, Moses said, that if a woman is caught in adultery, what should you be done? Stoned to death. And the question they also need to ask is, where is the man? Or women commit adultery or alone? Hmm? Where is the man? The man called? They only caught the woman. What of the man? Mm -hmm. That's to tell you that even the custom, the law, did not favor women. Most cultures don't favor women. That's why the custom of God's word is the perfect one. He said there's no male, no female. It's only in the New Testament when you come there that the Bible says no male, no female. Because we're all one. There's no Holy Ghost female. Holy Ghost male. Is there anything like that? No. Is the spirit of God. All right. Now, I, I just want to explain something here. So, Mary was actually asking a sincere question, trying to find out what part am I going to play in this? Which means, how am I going to give back to this child knowing that I, am, I have not met with any man before? Are you saying I'm going, I'm, you know, I'm going to sleep with them? And he said, so the angel had to quickly uh, make her understand. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Spirit will do what? Come upon you, and the power of the highest will what? Now, in other words, you don't have a part to play with any man, or you don't have any man does not have any part to play in this. But the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the highest shall come upon you, all right? Therefore also, that holy one who is to be born will be called what? The Son of God. Next verse, please. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived the son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her, who was called what? Barren. Yeah? I'm reading on. For with God, nothing shall be what? Nothing shall be impossible. Why? In other words, even Elizabeth is pregnant right now as I'm speaking to you. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Now, the second time Mary is going to speak, the first time is, I don't know a man. Angel, in case you don't know, I have never slept with any man before. And I'm not intending to do so. And the angel said, no, don't worry. 
It's not about any man. Joseph will not get involved. But that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Praise the Lord. You will wear the Holy Spirit like a garment. And so the second time she will speak, then Mary said, Behold the hand servants or maid, sorry, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to what? And the angel did what? Now, the first time the angel visited Zechariah, he spoke something else. There was no additional word here. The Bible says he departed. Why did he depart? Because of what she said. In other words, if it is true that what you are saying, I believe it, be it unto me according to what you have just said. So she verbalized it. She had faith. Now, sometimes I like to ask people, when did she get pregnant? Immediately she said this. Her pregnancy started immediately when she said, oh, be it unto me according to the word of God. So she said it. She didn't just hold it inside and said, no, the angel wouldn't have left. The angel left after she spoke. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now, let's see some other, other examples in scripture uh, about, you know, believing God and acting in faith. Praise the Lord. Now, now, this is quite interesting to me that Mary said what she believed. Zachariah also said his own belief. Praise God. Second Kings chapter 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 for the things that seemingly looks far from us will come even around you. Amen. For I am the one who walks behind the scene to establish my word and to fulfill my word. And that even I am doing right now. Amen. As many as trust and believe, so it is with them that you will return and find great joy. And you'll be excited about the things which I have done in your life. Say of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 7. Let's read, look at that scripture. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1, 2. And let's look at this man. Well, well, we may not read it. We can read it. But you know the story very well. In Second Kings <clears throat> chapter 7, verse 1, you know the story didn't start from there. You will need to go to Second Kings chapter um, 6. The Bible says, Bernadad beseeched the city of Samaria. And so nobody could go out, nobody could come in. So starvation or famine actually came by that. All right? Not because people were not famine. It was because at this time, their enemy came and besieged that city. And so nobody could go out. And as long as people don't go out into harvest, to, to harvest, it's not possible for people to come in with harvest. So nobody went out, nobody came in. So by that, scarcity occurred. All right? And then the Bible says the king, if you remember, it was at that same time that the Bible says as a result of, you know, that famine, that two women agreed to kill their sons. One agreed, we'll kill our own today. Then tomorrow we'll kill your own. You know, sometimes when I study scripture, I try to visualize, allow my mind, all right, to read the scripture. Because sometimes you can read scripture and not allow your mind to read it. If your mind doesn't read it, you can't play it into reality. You just think, well, this is a story. You know, when I was younger, <laughs> let me tell you. When I was younger, we used to go to Sunday school. Now, I never thought, I used to think all the story books, all the story uh, uh, Bible stories they used to tell us actually happened in heaven. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm telling you as, as a young boy. Now, I, I, how, where did I get it from? I got it from our teacher. The person who teaches us, yes. Now, they didn't have much knowledge. Now, but, you know, they, I used to think Goliath, um, you know, David and Goliath episode happened in heaven. I, used, I never knew that Israel actually existed on earth. I 
thought Jerusalem is in heaven. So all those Samson story and what have you, oh yeah, it's something that happened in heaven. That's the reality I used to think. And I, you know, one day I was asking myself, where did I get it from? Somebody must have told me, how can a child believe something except he heard it somewhere? Praise the Lord. Thank God now, you know, it's a better way. We are better teachers now. We are teaching children the truth. And children are even getting saved in their ch children's church. But in those days, that wasn't how it was. Okay? All right, so these two women <coughs> agreed and said, we'll kill my own son today. And then by tomorrow, you will bring your own son. I think they, they, these people, must, I believe they, these two women, they were neighbors. I want to believe. We will kill mine today. And then tomorrow we'll kill your own. And both of them agree. And you know what amazed me is that the Bible says, oh, well, well, the understanding there was that they agreed to eat one son today, which means they were so hungry, the starvation or the famine was so severe that they could eat a full-grown boy in one day. They could consume him, finish him. Hallelujah. And you know, sometimes when I read, I try to imagine how do you think that boy was killed? I'm sure the boy will cry, Mommy, it is me, oh. Mommy, it's me. And, and the mother, you know, will have just uh, closed her, her eyes as though she's not seen. And said, my son, we are hungry. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I learned something from there. So, this woman <clears throat> gave her son. How do you think they killed that boy? Of course, in the same way they killed goat. They'll have used knife, sharp one. And then maybe slice his throat. And blood will gush out. I'm painting the picture for you. Because I want you to see that side. And while the boy was butchered. I mean after they sliced the boy. They would have used knife. To cut. Yeah. Cut it into different parts. I'm sure they use some. They use um, machete. Some they use uh, axe. Just to hit the bone. Quack. How do you kill goat? Is that not the same way? It's the same way. Then they will use part of it, if you are from the north, they will use it to cook, a, maybe you, you use it for suya. If you are from the south, it depends on which side of the south you are from. If you are from the south, south, maybe they will use it to cook a idikaiko or a feifere or something. All right? If you are from the southwest, hmm, they will use part of it for asu. Do you understand? Then if you are from uh, 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 the south-south, which means uh, the other part of south or south is anywhere, they will use it for Ishiyahu. Now, but I am sure that's what they did. They used that boy to cook soup. And they must have ate. And when they finished eating, they said, Kai, this meal is sweet. Next day, madam, you know, my friend, it will be your own turn. And when it was the next day, you know what this woman did? She hid her son. Why? But you ate somebody's son. And I learned something from there. The Holy Spirit said to me that if you eat your seed, you will be in need. So the woman was wise not to eat her future because her son represents her future. So she hid her son. And then the news came to the king, you remember. And while they were hailing and crying and shouting, you know, the king got to know that, uh, you know, they had killed a, a young boy and had eaten him, you know, the day before. And when it was the next day and this woman was asking, oh, yeah, bring your own son, the woman refused. And so in the midst of that, you know, the story or the news got to the king. And, uh, you know, they, they, they were crying to the king, oh, king, help us. He said, from where? From the wine press? Or from the bound floor. There's no help anywhere. And in the midst of that, the king decided and said, okay, where is Elisha? How can we have Elisha in this city? And we are going through this. So the king actually planned to kill Elisha. 
He said, if his head is on his neck by this time tomorrow, then means I'm not the king of it. And he sent his servant. And you know, thank God, Elisha also had uh, a revelation that, <laughs> that the king has sent for him to be king. So he told the elders, when he completes, hold him down. Don't let him hold his servant because even his master is behind coming. That's when in chapter 7 now, it's still the same incident that the Bible says Elisha now came and prophesied and said, Thus saith the Lord, by this time, or hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, by this time tomorrow shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel where in the gates of Samaria. Now, at the time he was giving that prophecy, mind you, women, two women agreed to kill their son. At least one boy had gone. Now, so it's not possible that, listen to me, you mean by the time we wake up tomorrow, about this time you said, in 24 hours, we will have what? No. Huh? We'll have food to eat. No, that is not it. It says, by this time tomorrow shall a measure of fine flour sold for a shekel and two measures of barley be sold for a shekel. Now, what does that mean? Now, when he says fine flour, it simply means refined flour. Women, you know that if you are going to eat what in the north they call tuomasara, number one, you will have to harvest it. And then when you harvest it, what do you do? You dry it. And then when it is dry, what do you do? You grind it. And then when you grind it, what do you do? You sieve it. It is after it has been sieved that you can now use it to cook. But here is a prophet who is saying they will be refined. The one that has already been sieved. Already made. Ready for cooking. That is why there is a tendency for you not to be living. Because when will we go out to harvest? When will we bring it in to dry? When will we be able to grind it? When will we be able to sieve it? 24 hours old. Now, it's like me coming and telling you that by this time tomorrow, <laughs> shall a brand new car be sold for 20,000 naira. <laughs> now, if I should say something like that, and you don't mix it with faith, you just say, where did Pastor Fumi go to get this man? I'm sure by tomorrow you won't come back again. You just say... <laughs> See, see, if you even if you go lie, eh, eh, at least try. Mm. Tell us the one that you understand. 20,000. A brand new car. You did not Tokumbo. Now, so you can imagine what this man, whom the Bible says the king leaned on. Because when Elisha gave the word of God, the Bible says the man on whom the king leaned on said, even if God. Now, the man spoke. Did you notice his unbelief spoke? Even if God is to make with Abba, 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 shall these things be? That's an insult on God because God has already opened the windows of heaven. The windows of heaven is when God begins to speak. But he said, even if God is to make windows in heaven, these things can't be. All right? Now watch. That man doubted the word of God. But did you notice that his doubt spoke? And what did Elisha say? He said, well, you will see it, but you will not partake in it. Praise the Lord. Now, when you read, you will find out that that word came to pass. The man saw it. It's very funny that they positioned the man to be the one that will ration the food. But since he didn't believe the first word, he also didn't believe the second word. Because if he believed the first word, there would be no need for the second word. But since he didn't believe the ministry of Elijah, I mean Elisha, if he had, he would have just said, Oga, oh please, please, don't put me there. You think the man thought he was going to die that day? No. They put him in the center of where, so that the word of God can come to pass. In the midst of his unbelief. But that's not what I want you to see. So that man died. Because of what? What killed him? His mouth, what he said, his unbelief, he said it. He verbalized it. 
Now, but do you remember there were four lepers in the same episode? Now, those four lepers, I wish we had the time to read about them. Then you will understand that the Bible says they said to themselves, let us go to the camp of the enemy. They said to themselves, four people. Now, listen to me. I don't know the reason why they didn't argue among themselves. One said, I believe one started it. If we go to the city, there's no food there. We will die. If we also stay here, we will die. Let us go to the camp of the enemy. If they kill us, fine. And if they... If we survive, they leave us alive, then we'll, at least we'll be there to eat. Now watch. That was all God was waiting for. He was only waiting for somebody that will team up with him and speak. That, it was their speaking that enabled God to work for them. Did you notice that the Bible says when they started walking, what happened? The enemy heard a sound of how many people? Host. Now, they were walking. Can you imagine lepers? How, how do you think they were walking? You think they were banging their legs? How come they were hearing? Now, who were the ones that were instrumental to fulfilling the word of God? The lepers. Not even the people in the city. Now, what made them fulfill the word of God? What they said? Let us go. If they kill us, fine. But if they leave us, at least we'll be there. Now, isn't it funny that nobody among them argue and say, who did you say we should go to? Do you know these are hosts of warriors who are out against us. You say we should go there. It's better we stay here. It's better we die here. Do you understand? That's the natural way they should think. But what made them to think that way? And then they suddenly they started walking towards them. And by the time they got to the place, they discovered the camp was empty. And they had enough food to eat. Then they say, if we stay here, a worse thing will happen. Let's go and tell the people in the city. So they came and told the people in the city and said, hey guys, <laughs> there's plenty food, plenty rain met. Plenty clothes, plenty things, <laughs> you know, at the gate of Samaria. You know, the king himself didn't, he wasn't too sure. So they sent spies to go and check. And then they confirmed that it was so. Am I communicating? Yes, so you find out it was their faith and unbelief. The unbelief of the man that destroyed him. The faith. I don't know if the king believed what Elijah said. I don't know. If the king believed, but he didn't say. He didn't allow his doubt he didn't speak his doubt. If he had spoken his doubt, he too would have died. Are you with me? Yes, now, so the first thing to do in actualizing God's word or fulfilling the word of God is to believe it and to speak it. You remember the Bible talks about the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore we speak. Praise the Lord. If you believe it, then speak it. If you believe it, then say it. Praise the Lord. If God has said it, then say what God has said. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, there was a young man <clears throat> who came to me one day and said to me, Pastor, uh, I'm trusting God for a job. And I said to him, really? I was going to pray for him. He came to see me on a Saturday. And I wanted to pray for him in my office. The Holy Spirit said to him, said to me, don't pray for him. Just tell him to go and resume his job. Now, but before then, I asked him serious question. Because the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, I need a job. I said, where do you want to, uh, you know, so the Holy Spirit said, ask him where he wants to walk. <clears throat> so I asked the man, I said, where do you want to walk? <clears throat> he said, anywhere. Anywhere. I said, what do you mean by anywhere? He said, anywhere God chooses for him. You know, sometimes... We, we pray like that. We ask God like that. But you see, God has given you a mind to know what you want. So the Holy Spirit said to me, he won't receive anything because there's no place called anywhere. So eventually we're able to settle that. He said he wants to work in a bank. I said, okay, fine. Then the Holy Spirit said, what bank? Sir, any bank, pastor, any bank. I said, no, there's no bank called any bank. 
do you save in any if you see a bank call any bank will you want to save there my brother you would like to save in a bank call any bank who is the md anybody <laughs> praise the lord hallelujah which address anywhere you know your money is gone so i said which bank he mentioned the name of the bank he said send it bank i said okay go and resume the holy spirit said to tell him to go and resume his job he says that all i say yes he said no prayer i said well if there's need for prayer i will pray but there's no prayer so go and resume your work i said do you know how, how people dress in the uh, you know how bankers dress he said, yeah he lives in he was living in Barika then. So eventually, Monday morning, dressed up, uh, wore his suit and his tie, and then went to resume to, to resume his job. Now, so he got there. When he got there, he was asked. Eventually, he said that he came to resume his job. <laughs> you see, you can't speak something contrary to what God has said. That's how people miss it. You can't, you can't. Try to polish it for God. If God says it, say it the way he said it. You know, some other person will have just said, well, mm, I'm looking for a job. God said, go and resume your job. If you say you are looking for a job, it simply means you have canceled what God has said. So this brother went, stayed with them. Eventually, people laughed at him. As they were laughing, he too was laughing. But he wasn't laughing in unbelief. He was laughing because they were laughing so that they don't think he... So while they were laughing, he too was la laughing. So he called me and said, Pastor, um, they said there's no job. I said, who said so? He said, well, I met um, one of their managers who told me that. I said, okay, fine. Tomorrow, go back. God says, go and resume your job. Have you resumed the job? He said, yes. So he called me late in the, um, later in the evening that day or that night. I said, go back on Tuesday. So Tuesday he went back. By this time, many more people now know him. So while he was coming, they were like, oh, see this crazy guy. Amen. Now, but on Wednesday, he closed, he closed that deal. Wednesday morning, he went back. And when he got to, to the office, he was there. And then somebody did something, that person was let go, was sacked. And they were looking for somebody that would replace him. So news came to them, the HR manager, and said, you don't need to look for somebody. Somebody already resumed here since Monday. <laughs> That's how the guy was taken. Listen to me. You know what? And they backdated his employment, his date of employment to Monday. Why? He believed the word of God and took the steps that God said he should take. Praise the Lord. Now, if he didn't, he would think, well, God just said something maybe to excite me. It didn't happen. I don't know what happened. But no, God spoke to him because God was going to do it. Now, let me say this to you, that every time God speaks to you, God has released creative ability in your life. Waiting for you to stand in faith so that you can do what he has said. Am I communicating now? Yes. Praise the Lord. There's one of our brothers that God said to, uh, you know, at the beginning of last year or so, last year, beginning of last year, sometime, yeah, beginning of last year. And God said to him to get ready because he's going to have um, a job that will take him, you know, outside the country. Now, when he had that, he said in his mind, he thought, okay, well, maybe I'm going to apply for a job or what have you. So, eventually, the time came where uh, God opened a place for him. Not, you know, he works in a company, a pharmaceutical company, you know, um, big company, globally known. But he wasn't, he didn't think that the way the job was going to, he thought the job was going to come through where he was working. So, eventually, 
news came to him. Somebody told him about a job and said, well, I think this job may be that job that God spoke to you about. So he applied. All right? Now, and in the history of that company, no Nigeria has ever been taken. In the first place, they won't even consider you. And you know, there were many times this brother almost gave that word up. And so I would stand, oftentimes, I, I just get to know, I'll call him and tell him that, I hope you are holding to God's word. Because you need to hold to the word of God so I can see the reality of God's word. Now, to cut the story short, and then eventually this brother got this job. And uh, in the history of that company, it has never happened that way. So, his boss actually told him that it's not possible that you will be taken. His boss told him, his boss was from um, a Pakistani man, some, somewhere from Pakistan. Told him that, see, don't bother yourself. The best that can happen to you is maybe they may give you a job in South Africa. They will relocate you, you'll go to South Africa. But in this place, forget about it, not po possible. Because what you are asking for, even I cannot apply. Not possible. Now, but you see, when God says it, creative miracle. You remember I said, creative ability of God goes into action. The same word that God spoke when he said, let there be light. is the same word. When God speaks to you, is is equal to it. He has the same potential, the same power, the same ability to bring out whatsoever it is that God has said. So, eventually, this brother went. He did the first level of interview, the second level of interview, the third level of interview, the fourth level of interview, the fifth level of interview, and he kept, you know, talking to me. I kept telling him, I said, God has already spoken. It's impossible for you not to get this job. It's impossible that if they are going to take, of course, it's only one person in the world, the entire, you are the one because God spoke the word to you. Now, today, the brother, you know, in December, eventually, they had to move to UK. Now, they are moving to UK was not people were jack <laughs> Now, the, the, This was a job that came the, the, because the, that global office, the global office, the, you know, is in UK. So, they asked him and his family to move over. They did everything about their movement. They got them a house, got them what, you know, uh, you know even last week here we spoke. And so, the brother told me, he said, do you know what? People are asking me, even in UK, how did you come about it? He said, I can't explain. The only thing I know is God gave a word. I believe the word. I almost gave up on the word. But I went back, I believe the word of God. Praise the Lord. And today, I am here. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Praise the Lord. Because when you believe the word of God, you are on the journey to fulfilling that word. So what has God spoken to you? Now listen to me. I've also discovered this, that. Anytime you move from the place of faith to unbelief, you know what happens? The word will stay. You can walk and go some miles. When you return back, you pick it from where it is. There's no stale word of God as per the word of prophecy. No, it's not past tense. Anytime you return in faith, you pick it from there. And it will get and it will come to pass. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. So, we believe God's word, and then we speak it. We speak what he has said. We say what he has said. Hallelujah. There was a man <clears throat> who had um, an accident. Both legs, you know, he, I mean, he had a spinal cord injury. I was ministering in their church, Baptist church in Port Harcourt. And so the pastor said to me, I really want you to, to, to go and meet this member. I, I would love for you to, to meet this member. So I said, okay, fine. What's wrong with the member? Can't the member come and say, oh, the man has an accident. You know, he can't walk and what have you. I said, okay, fine. Let's go. So after the morning session, I think I was actually leaving that day or so, um, you know, to the airport. And so we went through the house of the man. And then we saw the man, uh, you know, <clears throat> of course, the man couldn't come to the sitting room. We had to go to his bedroom. So we went to his bedroom, and then we sat. So the man started speaking and was voicing out, you know, his desire that if God can just heal him, you know, there are many things he wants to really do and what he wants to do. 
Immediately he started talking. The voice of God came to him. He said, tell him to paint those things out. Print them out and put it on his wall. So that every morning when he wakes up, he will tell himself, these are the things I want to do because he is going to rise and walk. All right? So I told him the word of God. And then I told him, I said, you know, one way you can help yourself, God just spoke now, right? Write everything God has said. Put it on the wall. And tell yourself, I'm going to rise according to the word of God. I keep saying that to yourself. Because that is your faith. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. If you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that what you have said shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. That's what the Bible says in Mark 11, 22, or 23, sorry. So, everybody went away. Then, two years later, somebody called me, sent me a text. So, I read the text, and then I noticed uh, something to the effect that, ah, you've been, you know, you were in our church, you even came to my house. I was that brother that, you know, had a, uh, um, you know, a spinal cord injury, who had an accident, but God has healed me now. And I just want you to know that the businesses I said I will do, I am actually in them doing. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Because the brother believed in the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, the word of God is so powerful though. Very powerful. Anything God says to you, he has the power to generate and produce the effect in your life. Am I communicating? So, I met this brother eventually, one of those times I was back to Port Harcourt. And the brother told me, he took me to his, um, you know, another house. He had built a bigger house. And he told me, he said, I want to take you back to where it began. So, he went back to his old house. You know, his cousin was now living there. Took me to his bedroom and he said, you remember, this was where you stood with me and this is where the God gave me the word of God. He said, I have chosen to keep this place. As a place of memorial. Not memorial as forgiving. But as a place. Whenever people come. I come and show them. I say this is where God gave me the word of God. And what I am doing today. Is a manifestation of what God has said. Do you understand what I am saying to you? Yes. Praise the Lord. So I don't know what God has said to you. God may have said something to you. This year. The beginning of this year. Last year. The year before last. See no word of God is empty. He said his word will not return unto him void or empty. His word will happen. It will come to pass. Praise the Lord. It will come to pass. It may stay longer, but it will come to pass. Praise the Lord. But it begins by us mixing it with faith. So the Bible says they mix the word of God with what? With faith. They mix what? The word of God with faith. So what has God said to you? Hallelujah. The other thing I will say, okay, maybe before we get to tomorrow evening, is that, you know, when God speaks sometimes, apart from recording it, is that you need to also transcribe it. Amen. Know it like the back of your hand. Yes. That you are saying it to God because you know what he has said. You keep talking to God about it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One of our sisters in Calabar, you know, was, uh, had so much challenge when he was in the military, um, you know, she, she's, she retired as a one-star uh, general, you know, in the Nigerian Air Force. And I remember that um, God had told her about her be becoming, you know, that in her set, she will be the only lady that will be promoted and given that rank. But you know what? Generals fought her. They put her name, they will remove it. Five generals and everyone that tried to stand, God had a way of removing them before their time. <laughs> Am I communicating? Until the one whom God will use says she's a lady, let her be the one that will be there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, now, that lady, you know, him, he, he amazes me. Every time I have opportunity to see her, she'll tell you, oh, pastor, you remember on so, he will give me the date. She will give me the date, give me the time, give me the word, verbatim. She's, she 
She has a way of just cramming, you know what, memorizing that word. And she will tell me word for word. On so, so, so day, this is what God, in fact, for me, I, of course, I, it's not possible for me to remember what I say or what God says through me. It's not possible. Even what God says to me, says to, to my wife through me, I don't remember. Huh? So how can I now remember the one that he's talking? You know, I can, I, can, I can remember vividly. So sometimes I say, well, sometimes, yeah, I think God said something along this side. But I, why? Because I'm not the one who should remember what God is saying to you. You know, I get amazed that sometimes people t- ask me in some, I've been to many meetings where people will ask me, Pastor, uh, uh, you know, when you came to our church, God spoke through you. But I can't remember what God said. Ah, from where? So how will I remember? Is the God you should be talking to. And say, God, please, can you remind me what you said? Now, so we value the word of God. We'll come to that. And when you do, you find out that God, you know, speaks. Uh, one of our brothers, too, you know, this one, uh, you know, amazed me. God said to him, it's a year of restoration. All right? And you know the way God spoke? God said, things will be stolen and they will be restored. So this brother held God to what he said. He said, God, you say, as God was speaking to him, in his house, they were stealing. Thieves were in his house. Robbers were there. And you know what? They packed everything neatly, kept it, you know, in their, I mean, you know, the, behind the fence, you know, on the fence or the other side of the fence. And they couldn't go with it. So when he entered his house, it virtually looked like a football field. Everything was clear. So he said, Lord, you say it is the year for me, it is restoration. If it's restoration, you said things will be stolen. Thank you, Lord, because things are, are stolen. But you said they will be restored. Right? So, Lord, the B part. I sit here for those things to be restored. And then somebody came from, you know, where and called him and said, ah, are these not your things over there? He said, hey, really? Everything they stole was kept neatly. He packed everything and brought them back. But that's not the one that amazed me. He bought a vehicle that was stolen. And then two vehicles. One was stolen. The other one, you know, they vandalized it. You know, uh, picked a different part of that vehicle. He insisted that he wasn't taking that car until everything comes back. Even me, when he told me the testimony, I said, my brother, you have faith. You have some faith. <laughs> because some other person would just say, don't worry. I will replace the parts. No, this brother says, not taking it. Policeman told him that, Mr. Man, take your bag and go. He said, no. Everything that is stolen will come back. All right? The dashboard, gone. Wheels, gone. Some part of the engine, gone. By the time this brother will come and pick his car, everything came back home. Everything, everything. No, you know, when he was sharing it, I, 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 if, I'm, if it wasn't that I myself knew what God could do, I would have said, brother, you are lying. <laughs> and then his friend who was there when they went to receive the car said everything that was taken out of that car was brought back. Am I communicating? Praise the Lord. My brother, I'm hearing the Spirit of God is saying for me to say to you. It says, everything that I have revealed to you has a stipulated time. Has a time allotted to it. I'm hearing the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you. He said, the things that you are doing and the things that you are planning to do are of me. I'm hearing the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you. He said, but you see, everything will begin to walk in line and begin to push into their order. But I'm hearing the Spirit of God is saying that as I'm speaking to you now, you will find that I will open unto you doors, say of the Spirit of God, that will cause men from even places, neighboring places, to come to your vicinity. But I hear the Lord saying for me to say to you, he says, uh, diligence, diligence in the things that you do. 
For I hear the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you that, yeah, it looks as though you have been on this terrain for a while. But I hear the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you, if you will continue a little longer, then you will find that things will change and that everything in the external will change to suit the picture that you carry inside. For I hear the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you that I'm bringing people into your life, say of the Lord, I will be instrumental to the things that I'm going to do and to the places that I'm going to take you to, say of the Lord. For I hear the Lord saying that you will be a man, say of the Spirit of God, that will stand in between the corridors and you will have opportunity to walk in corridors of power in and out. I am hearing the Lord saying you will make decisions with them and you will find a bearing even in such places, say of the Lord. And I'm hearing the Lord saying for me to say to you that if you will continue in that path that you know, even the path of truth, say of the Lord, then I will crown your effort and I will bring you into greater places of influence and greater places of responsibility, say of the Spirit of God. For I'm hearing the Lord saying for me to say to you that in this hour, you will find that you will be like one who has activity all around you. And things are suddenly coming into light. Like one who stays under the influence of a light. You know, like one who has, a, you know, more, more like, like a floodlight over you. And suddenly you will find that people are, are graduating towards you. Because activity is going to surround you in this season. And I'm hearing the Lord saying for me to say to you that in the midst of it, you will find that you will climb quickly and you will come to the place, say of the Spirit of God, where many will uh, want to connect with you. Because in this hour and in this season, say of the Spirit of God, uh, the activity that is surrounding you and the things that are coming around your life, say of the Lord, will bring you into that place, say of the Spirit of God, where you will have great influence and greater authority to exercise those things and to bring to pass even those things that you have as dream in your heart. For those dreams are of me, say of the Lord, and they will come to pass. I see you standing in the center of your dream like Joseph of old. And I'm hearing the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you, then you will find that even in the midst of it, say of the Lord, you will be one who will command authority and you will command, yeah, command things and they will be done even at your word and by the weakness of the things that you will speak, say of the Spirit of God. I hear the Lord saying for me to say to you, is that there are things that I have spoken to you even in, by the vision of the night. And I'm hearing the Spirit the Spirit of God is saying for me to say to you that those dreams are about to come into fruition. You have waited for them, but the time for manifestation is close, even now. And so as you are diligent, and as you are diligent, even before me, and you begin to walk in the light of the things that you already know, further things will come to you. Say of the Spirit of God. And in the midst of it, say of the Lord, I will honor my name in your life. For I hear the Lord saying, you have been faithful. You have done the things you know to do. But now is the time where I will open you up into greater, greater opportunities. Say of the Lord, in this nation and even in this city, say of the Spirit of God, your name will boomerang. It will go in the mouths of men. No, not like returning back in bad. No, it will go to places, say of the Spirit of God. And in the midst of it, my name shall also become an honor that you will wear as a badge over your life. Do you understand the word of God? Say of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. Oh, blessed be God. Blessed be God. A while ago, <coughs> the Lord <coughs> said to me that he's relocating people. Relocation is going to happen to us. Now, what is this relocation? I just want to share that quickly. Amen. Relocation. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you are leaving. It simply means God is moving you from where you are to where you ought to be. There are some of you that are behind in the scheme of things, which means you are not supposed to be where you are now. God wants to move you quickly so that you'll be able to arrive where you need to be. Spiritually speaking, it will affect your natural circumstance. Which means your situation around will also change to suit this new thing that God is doing. Am I communicating? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My sister, the Lord will say for me to tell you, he says, yes, those plans are in place. And those things you have done. But I hear the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you that, oh yes, this time you will find that your waiting has not been in vain. 
For I'm hearing the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you, has it not been said that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength? And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. I'm hearing the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you, the Lord is about to place you above your contemporaries and your peers. I hear the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you, like in a flash of light, they will suddenly, the people that even you are looking up to will suddenly begin to look up to you because the Lord has elevated you and have placed you upon a pedestal. And I'm hearing the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you, yeah, 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 even as it is written in the Word, like the city that is set upon a hill. So it is concerning you, say of the Spirit of God. For I'm hearing the Lord saying for me to say to you that I will bring water around you, say of the Lord. Not water just to quench your thirst, but I hear the Spirit of God saying this, what I hear say of the Lord that will make your environment fertile for the things that I'm about to do, say of the Spirit of God. And I'm hearing the Lord saying for me to say to you that in the midst of this, you will find that you will be one, say of the Lord, that will be handpicked among many, say of the Spirit of God. And in the midst of it, say of the Lord, you will make a journey that will take you out, but it will bring you back, say of the Lord. You will go and learn, you will go and understand. You will go for learning, you will go for understanding, but you will return. Among many, say of the Spirit of God, few will be chosen, but among the few you will be one of them, say of the Lord. For in this hour, I hear the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you that you are my delight and you are my beloved, say of the Spirit of God. And I hear the Spirit of God saying for me to say to you that in this hour I am exchanging the seasons to favor you. And that like Jacob of old, I hear the Lord saying for me to say to you that you will be able to speak and be able to say, indeed, the Lord has shown me his face. The Lord has been gracious unto me. But I hear the Lord saying for me to say to you, this is the time and this is the hour. I hear the Lord saying for me to say to you that I'm going to do a walk in your life. And this walk, say the Spirit of God, will begin fully at the middle of this month. But as I'm looking, I'm looking, and the Lord is saying to me that in June, I hear the Spirit of God saying is a, is a, jo is a journey, say the Lord. I'm hearing the Lord saying is a journey, say the Spirit of God, uh, that will bring shaking here here and there. But the shaking is by me. It's so that I will shake up the things that are not of me, so that the things that are of me will abide. But after then, you will come out brighter like gold, say of the Spirit of God. And among your contemporaries, you will be one that will be ahead of them. Because they will start looking up to you at that time. Even those that you are looking up to now, suddenly, you will find that you will stand ahead of them. You will stand ahead of them, say of the Spirit of God. And so the Lord will say for me to tell you, he said, prepare, prepare, because soon you're about to make that journey. Say of the Spirit of God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you, we bless your name, all right? So, so, so God is moving us, he said there's relocation. Relocation simply means God is moving us from where we are to where we ought to be. Praise the Lord. And that is happening by the Spirit of God. Am I communicating? That is happening by the Spirit of God. Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to speak your word. Thank you. Thank you. We pray for everyone today, those who are watching us also online, and those that are here. We ask, oh God, that Lord, the work of relocation will begin tonight. Bring us into the fullness of the things that you have destined for us. You said we need to catch up with time, you said. We trust you, O oh God, that by your hand you will help us to move quickly, quickly, quickly into the season that we ought to be. We thank you and we honor you, Jesus. Thank you for what you are doing tonight and thank you for what you will yet do throughout this meeting. Oh, thank you. Blessed be God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things God said to me before I take my seat is that we should be open because in this meeting, we are going to have revelation. Revelation. And I believe that that will begin from now. As we open up, God will enable your eyes to see. All right? Some of you, you are going to hear footsteps you never had before. But those footsteps are footsteps of God's 
word to you. You will hear the voice of God like you have never heard it before. Some of you will almost even turn. Did you hear what I heard? No. It will almost sound like you are hearing an audible voice. But it's the voice of God. That is what it is. And that's what God is about to do. Thank you.